Hi, I have two wheel spacers over here. One is 15 millimeters, the other is 25 millimeters. And in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to check whether your vehicle will be able to have a wheel spacer or not. What I mean by that is the minute you install a wheel spacer between the mag and the hub, the mag comes out of it, which means that the rim sits a bit further out, which also means that the tire is further out. Now, over here we have the wheel arch, and what we are worried about is whether the wheel arch will scratch or damage the tire if the car is loaded. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, firstly check whether the wheel arch will scratch on your tire. And then secondly, I'm going to cut this wheel arch, show you how I go about that in order to install this wheel spacer. All right, so just showing you these two wheel spacers. All right, so this first one is 15 millimeters and the second one is 25 millimeters. Okay, so the very first step is to try and load your vehicle to see what the current situation is. For example, if you look at the vehicle now, you can see that I've managed to get the wheel quite deep inside the wheel arch. How I did that is I loaded the boot and jacked up the car on the opposite side. Okay, I just put some weights in there, or you could get someone to sit in the back seat. But most importantly is to jack up the opposite wheel on the front if you're working on the back or if you're working on the front then you want to jack up the back so i'm now on the other side of the car i've jacked it up uh, so i can test this statically meaning i don't have to drive around and do tests i can just uh, test it while the car is stationary now what i'm going to do is take a measurement now keeping in mind i haven't got a wheel spacer installed yet this is stock standard so what i'm trying to ascertain is how much space i'll be able to create in order to put a spacer there because i need to decide what spacer to put on this vehicle right so the first thing is can i get my fingers in here and yes i can it's a little bit snug towards the back here but as i said this is the stock standard now this tire does have this extra rubber on the side here this is not always the case but the most important part is actually here this is what i'm trying to check so what i'm doing is i'm measuring from the side wall of the tire to where the wheel arch the steel is sitting so if i measure it so that's just over one centimeter i'm talking about that clearance over there between the side wall and this wheel arch remember this wheel arch is steel and if the steel scratches on the side wall, it can slit the tire. All right, so I've put on the thinner spacer to start, but I can already tell that it will only allow this thinner spacer. All right, I'm starting with this 15 millimeter one. I'm gonna put the wheel on, and then I'm gonna show you where it scratches. Now, because of the wheel spacer, I now need to have a wheel lug that is actually longer. Now, these are too long, but I'm not gonna cut them or use smaller ones yet until I've finalized the thickness of the wheel spacer. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some chalk and I'm going to shade the inside of the wheel arch so that I can see where on the tire it's scratching. So I'm taking this chalk and I'm coloring in on the wheel arch here. Right, so there you can see how it's actually sitting on the tire. Get a closer look at that. It's actually on the tire. So definitely would scrape and probably cut through the sidewall of the tire over time and it will deform the wheel arch You might even see some paint cracking here if we don't deal with this now here towards the front there I can get my finger in a little bit, but as you can see towards the back Here at the top and then towards the back. That's where the real problem is So it means that if a spacer is to be put on this vehicle the wheel arch will have to be cut now not all wheel arches have this thick lip here for example the profile here is two centimeters so we've got about two centimeters to work with here and having a look at a top view you can see that this is quite straight so because of this extra bit here this also means that one could cut this and probably get away with adding a spacer here because this is actually straight and then it curves in now, just having a look at this, well, there's no way that uh, I would be able to put a thicker spacer than the one that's already installed. In fact, uh, 15 millimeters is already quite thick 
because I'll have to cut away this whole side here, which I will still demonstrate. So to answer the question, I wouldn't be able to put a 25 millimeter on this vehicle unless I had to flare these wheel arches, which one can do. You can, re you can actually flare these more, but that means panel beating and things like that. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to remove the wheel, remove the wheel arch cover. I'm going to cut this lip off here. I'm going to cut some of the wheel arch away the plastic inner that's on the inside then I'm going to seal it with some foam or maybe a membrane and then I will put the wheel on and you'll see that it won't scrape and just by the way there you can see the chalk where it was sitting it didn't even get past the side wall here so that's telling me that um, this would be the maximum for this vehicle right so I'm going to take the wheel off now and get started with the wheel arch cutting right so now I'm going to remove this wheel arch guard over here so I'm going to remove there's a number eight a number eight push pin eight eight push pin there's one hiding here a number ten and there's one right at the top over there and I will need to open this which is for the ABS so I'll have to unplug that and remove these two push pins as well right so i just need to unplug this all right so i'm just pushing that side back in there now i need to pull out these two push pins let's take a pliers one so i've just pulled out these push pins which allows me to pull this capsule out now some of these you can actually unscrew but some they won't come out like that so you almost have to pull the back with pliers uh, possibly unscrewing it with the pliers in hand and then it it comes out right just keeping in mind when you move this cover over here the wheel arch cover a lot of sand and grit and a lot of dirt and stuff is going to fall out so it is a bit of a messy job so i'm just gripping it like that and releasing it from this capsule There was just one more screw at the back there and now this thing can pop down right right so the arch is removed notice how thick this lip is and this is what i'm going to be cutting away in order to get uh, that wheel spacer on this vehicle so i'm gonna have to cut along all over here now before i do the cutting i want to have a look over here where the bumper attaches uh, to the top here and the reason being is this is also going to have to be cut away. So there's going to be some grinding over here to, to thin this out. But I can see that the attachment point is much further back. So it's not going to be a problem. So I'm just going to have quite a bit of space here to work. Right, now this vehicle is fitted with an alarm which is quite out of the way. So what I'm looking for is, is there anything that is going to be in the way where the wheel is going to go to? So for example, over here... There's actually nothing here so there's no pipes there's no wires so that means I'm pretty safe to cut this away and um, actually cut away some of the plastic arch as well so here's the arch I'm going to cut away like this and then I'm going to fill up the gap between here and the wheel arch with some foam or possibly a membrane because we don't want water and debris getting on the other side uh, it'll make sense once you see me uh, fit this back Right, so I'm now going to cut away the extra profile here on this wheel arch. All right, I just want to show there are some scratches along this uh, wheel arch. Just before I start, I just quickly check so that I know what's me and what was before me. Right, so what I've done is I've cut these slits all the way in. As you can see, every, say, 10 or so centimeters. There, I haven't gone past the uh, rim here, obviously. But as you can see, I've gone quite far there. But not, uh, I don't want it to be seen from the outside but there. So every 10 or so centimeters, I've cut these. Now, the reason why I've done this is because this is an arch, it's much easier to cut it in sections rather than trying to cut this in one go. I just put some protective tape you could put paper and such to protect the rest of the car 
but um, from the camera angle it might look like it's damaging the car but uh, not really so uh, I just put that there Right, so I've cut quite far into here. There's no way that this metal can cut into the tire. It is too far in now. Right, so I'm just taking a grinding disc now and I'm just grinding on the inside. Don't hold the disc on the paint for too long. Keep moving, otherwise it'll overheat and the paint may bubble or break off. <laughs> Right, now I'll just take some sandpaper and just smooth this out. This is a hundred grit. And as you can see, I'm taking my hand and I'm actually rubbing it here. And there's no way that I can cut my hand. So it is smooth. So this could not cut a tire. Even if it scratched the tire, it would not be able to cut through because it can't even cut through my skin. Right, now I'm just going to cut this cover. I already know where I'm cutting from. I'm cutting from here and I'm going round like this all the way to there. I have a template because I've already done this on the other side. So I'm just going to use this as a bit of a guide. Right, now I'm just going to take some alcohol and just clean the surfaces. So I'm just going to put some on a cloth here. And I'm going to clean on the inside here. Right, now I'm going to clean here as well. I'm cleaning this because when I put the foam, it will stick to a clean surface, not a dirty surface. Right, so I've put the cover back in. I've put the ABS sensor back on there you can see it's packed away okay push pins are in right so the next step is to use a filling foam and what i'm going to do i'm going to squirt the foam on the inside here all along you see this is where i cut it all along on the inside the reason for the foam is that we don't want water and sand and debris getting inside here so it's actually just going to block it off and it's also going to reduce some noise I just use a scraper to push the foam inside. Right, so now I just leave it to dry. And don't worry about this over here, because once it's dry, I'm gonna spray it black. Right, so there the foam has now dried, and all I need to do is cut it away with a knife. So all I'm going to do is take a knife and cut. So I'm going to do that all along this cover. Right, so I've cut away the excess foam. It doesn't need to be an artwork because it's going to be sprayed now. Right, now using black spray paint, I'm going to spray the inside. Right, just some tips with your spacer. It should be very snug around here. As you can see, when I put it on, it's actually, it, there's no movement at all. And this as well, this should be very tight on your wheel. Otherwise, if it's not, you'll have to use spigots. But best case is if you're getting a spacer made, make it exactly the size of your wheel so that it is a snug fit and you don't need spigots. 
Now, because I've added a spacer, the regular wheel bolts will not work because they are too short. So I have longer wheel bolts. You should be able to turn it at least seven times in the hub, but you do not need to have them too long. Otherwise, they will go into the hub and can interfere with the handbrake system or the rear braking system if it's not rear brake discs on your vehicle. Right, so I've uh, jacked up the car and let it uh, depress quite a lot on this tire. And what I want to show is that, that before I couldn't get my hands in here, specifically over here. And as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit of room now. So there you can see there's quite a bit of space there. All right, so with the spacer, we still have enough space now. We got a similar amount of space that I had before I had cut the wheel arch without the spacer installed. And there at the back, there we go. That's what we wanted. Lots and lots of space there. I can actually feel the bump stop. Right, I'm on the other side of the car now and um, I have it uh, jacked up on the opposite side so that the wheel arch is sitting over the wheel and I'm just doing some tests and I can see that they, it's quite close here um, and you would need to do this after you've done your your work and what after you've done your cutting and what I'm doing is I'm just putting some chalk on that corner there and there's another one on this side right so there's the chalk and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce on the car Okay, I can hear the bump stop engaging. And now I'm going to look at the tire and see if there's any white on it. Right, on this side, we're all clear. There's no chalk on the tire at all. And the same goes for this side. There's also no chalk. Right, so there's the job complete. And here are a few pictures so you can see what it looks like when it's done.